stream everybody it is friday july 23rd 2021 uh welcome to the stream it because it's friday we're doing uh part 10 of our ongoing friday series it's a retro roulette called more games about eating and food i spent a bunch of time curating a list of over 500 retro games from atari 2600 to nintendo 64 and we have it all hooked up to like a random number generator or a roulette wheel and i have the power to spin the wheel at any time but so do you We've got a brand new channel reward that's a thousand moonstones. You can use it at any time if you want me to play a different game. Um, and whatever game we get, we have to play. Now the list itself is themed around games that have eating or food as a main mechanic or a main weapon or collectible. Uh, for example, last episode we played Adventure Island 2 and we beat that. That's the Game Boy, the game Boy version of it, not the NES version. Um, but in that game you collect fruit uh, and fill your energy bar and that's that's the theme of food around that game uh, we have also played some games a bunch of arcade games where you you play as chefs or bakers we played yoshi's cookie we played a bunch of rom hacks of super mario 64 where instead of getting stars uh, it's a halloween themed hack where you collect candy and uh, we've also played a ton of super mario world rom hacks so you never know what we're going to get um, my name is Matt, otherwise known as 3upMoon, here on Twitch, and if uh, you're watching live on twitch.tv slash 3up underscore moon, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube after the fact, uh, like I said, this will be, I think, part 10, either 9 or 10. It'll be on our, uh, our playlist of more games about eating and food. Um, and also, all my streams are uploaded there, so I stream every day from 1pm Pacific onward, but you can always catch me um, on YouTube after the fact. also want to say thank you to Mortis for the follow. Appreciate that. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. And thank you to Rocktree1995 for those uh, 100 bits yesterday, as well as the raid from Iliadruk. Now I spun the wheel to start things off today, and we got uh, number 249. And that is actually Garfield caught in the act on Sega Genesis. So that's what we're going to start with. It's a platformer where Garfield gets sucked into his television. It's very 90s. Uh, every stage is um, a different like genre of stuff on TV. The collectibles are pizza and lasagna and burgers. And uh, most Garfield games have uh, a, a plot centered around food. So we'll give it a shot. Uh, it came out on the Sega CD as well. And came out, I think, also on the Game Gear. So we're going to play the Sega Genesis version. Uh, I actually played this game... Uh, I didn't realize it was on Sega Genesis growing up. I, I played it on uh, PC CD-ROM. Like, I remember getting a bunch of Sega CD games that were ported over to PC and just sold at our local... Like, at Staples and stuff. It was pretty funny. Um, so, Garfield Caught in the Act and Sonic CD were two games that I picked up that were originally released on Sega CD. Um, but I just played the CD-ROM versions, and they were really cool. So it'll just be a second here. I haven't played the, the Genesis version, um, but it'll be a moment here. We'll just listen to some more music from Mario Paint, and then I will have Garfield caught in the act on Sega Genesis. 
up next. Stick around.
is one of my favorite pieces of music in Mario Paint's entire soundtrack. Definitely worth checking out. That's what we're listening to now. Um, it's very spacious, and I make ambient music myself, and uh, I actually have a track that's very uh, directly inspired by this piece of music here. Um, in uh, one of my latest albums. Latest, as in in the last five years. I'll post my music link in the chat for everyone. Basin Spectra is the name. I just have a band camp for people.
and <clears throat> welcome to the stream everyone hello hello um we are uh, gonna play our first game of the day uh, as i was explaining earlier uh, basically so this is episode uh, nine or ten of more games about eating and food i have a curated list of retro games that are all uh, related to food or eating or cooking in some way and i'll spin the wheel um, the roulette wheel whatever game we get uh, in that list of retro games we have to play uh, last week we played Aladdin on the Super Nintendo and beat that, and then we also played Adventure Island 2 on the Game Boy and beat it. But we played some weird um, Game Boy Advance farming sim games, um, some original Game Boy puzzle games. Um, there's all sorts of stuff on the list, including ROM hacks. Um, so let me load up Garfield Caught in the Act. This is the first game we got. I can spin the wheel at any time, you can spin the wheel at any time using Moonstones. And this game was released on Game Gear, Sega Genesis, and Sega CD. Okay, cool. You should be able to see the game and hear the game in just a second. Let's do this. Ah, what a nice classic sound. Like I said before, I had this on CD-ROM, and it is a very interesting game. Of course, the controller is not working, so let me fix that. But yeah, I played this on CD-ROM. It originally um, came out on this first, and then eventually on Sega CD. But the CD-ROM is just the ported version of the Sega CD uh, version. Um, I spent a lot of time with Sonic CD, though. I really like the time travel aspect, and ironically, this game also kind of has that that uh, aesthetic as well. <clears throat> now this should work. Garfield, uh, the font using uh, the, the font that Garfield uses basically is that classic Cooper Black. I don't know if uh, many people know specifically the name of it, but it's in everything. It's like the Doors LA Woman font. It's the font in. Um, 
so many things like just look up Cooper Black and you'll see you'll know exactly what I mean um, you'll start seeing it everywhere We've got kitty normal so kitty I imagine is just easy Health bonus, hamburgers and pizza. Invincibility, coffee. That's all ammunition, okay. Catch him. Garf Jam. <clears throat> Try to fix an old uh, tube television. That's the game. We're in the TV. Literally, that's the first stage. <clears throat> yeah, it did. Um, on the Sega CD, it's a little higher resolution. Count Slobulo's Castle. Oh, oh, oh. Did anyone think we were going to be playing Garf Sylvania today? Castlefield. We can throw skulls. Cool. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh-oh, I didn't mean for that to happen. Damn. Huh, we can't actually jump back up that way. Missed it. We missed our chance. What is a lasagna? A miserable little pile of secrets? How about you? Really? Seriously? I don't know if any of my attacks landed there, but that's a pretty badass game over screen. Coffin pizza, nothing wrong with coffin pizza. In Garfield's eyes. Ah. This is crazy. Ah, 
What kind of ghosts and goblins nonsense is this? Wasn't fast enough. It's not bad. It's just hard. It's just difficult. I remember playing the shit out of this as a kid. Pokey. I'm assuming that's my save state. Garfs and goblins, folks. Super garfs and goblins. to make it sound like Castlevania. Get those hamburgs. And boobs. Hot dogs. Field. Garfula. Count Garfula. I like that one. That sounds a little better. We're getting there. Holy shit, this is difficult. Actually, an episode called Count Lasagna of Garfield. That's funny. Dracula's cat. I don't remember that one. Oh shit. Oh shoot. I saw it coming. That's not an easy boss fight. Oh, 
Didn't even do anything, come on. I tried pressing the wrong button. This is awful. Just one second, I'm just gonna be right back.
my apologies uh, that there's no music here. I'm, I should have put music on. I just had to go, and my, my partner was just heading out, so I had to just go and help her with a few things, and she's now heading out for the day. Um, and also make a coffee, too, because, you know, we got that coffee in this game, and I was like, you know, I don't even have a coffee today. I should have a coffee. I should definitely have a coffee. So thanks for your patience. I, I apologize. Um, there's a little bit of music from... Okay, I'm back. Let's do this. Let's see if we can actually beat this boss. Or if someone wants to spin the wheel at any time, remember that's a new uh, channel reward that we have. So for a thousand new stones, you can spin the wheel and make us play a different game, different retro game that's uh, related to food in some way. This is not an easy boss fight at all. Thank you. 
I don't know. Like, I can't tell if we're just like hits away from winning or if we're doing any damage at all, you know? definitely tell that I'm getting hurt, but I can't tell if I'm hurting the boss. I'm gonna have to spin that wheel real quick. Oh, 
So yeah, I just want to show off some of the other levels. It's got good music. It's a challenging as hell platformer. Garfield caught in the act. It's available on Game Gear and also uh, was released on CD, Sega CD, and this. Alright, we've got game number 23 in the list, so let's take a look and see what that is. And we can watch some of the demo and see some of the other levels that are included here. I always thought this level was very difficult, but very cool. Somebody's not a full a full game. What the heck? Oh, okay. It's somebody's uh, vanilla level design competition entry. So in the last part, we actually played a full ROM hack of Super Mario World vanilla level design competition. And basically, what it is is a collaboration hack. There's a competition held on Super Mario World Central. Um, I'll do a quick shout out to Super Mario World Central if you're interested at all in playing Super Mario World ROM hacks or getting into, you know, using some of the utilities to make your own levels and your own overworlds and stuff. They run some really cool contests and they put out a collaboration hack that basically is an overworld that weaves together everyone's entries. Um, it's really fun. It uh, kind of is its own game in its own self, or like 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 as a standalone thing. But also, everyone that made a level is completely different. You know style and it's really interesting so the vanilla level design contest means you can mainly only use uh assets from the vanilla game as far as i i, I know um so graphics and stuff like that you can edit them but you, like like color wise but you can't uh you know you're not importing custom sprites or custom enemies or anything like that um so it's and it, the mechanics are primarily all what's within super mario world already as you can see here, we've got a Garfield, uh, like, film noir detective level, a mystery level. Maybe not Monday, maybe not tomorrow. Of all the lasagnas you had to walk into, you had to walk into mine. So what we got with our spin is one person's level, a single level that they uh, submitted for the level design competition. Uh, it's from 2012, it is by Tai Tai, and it's called Radish Romp, so that's what we're gonna play next. It's just, just one level from Super Mario World, uh, or from a Super Mario World ROM hack. Then we'll spin that wheel again. Let me just update the uh, stream title. There's all sorts of ROM hacks and homebrews and different modifications of games uh, in this list as well, so you never know what we're going to get. 
Um, Garfield caught in the act. It's a really tough platformer. I recommend it, though. <clears throat> if you can get far in it and play through some of the levels, there's some pretty cool level designs in it. Um, but yeah, it's really, uh, it's a challenge for sure. See if this works, and then uh, then we'll spin that wheel again and see what we're gonna get. Should be able to see the game and hear the game in just a second here. Okay, so if I do this um, and then this, we should be good. So this is um, an entry by Tai Tai for a pure vanilla level design competition in Super Mario World Central, and it's called Radish Romp. Oh come on, is, it, is this going to make me restart it again? Hold on a second, folks. Sometimes I just gotta <clears throat> mess around with this controller. It's kind of annoying. Do, 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 do. Hey, Legendary Dragon, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Start this. How? Sorry, folks. Just a second. Uh, Legendary Dragon, how far did I get in Pokemon Stadium? I ended up getting to Blaine and beating Blaine. Um, and then we played the first trainer of Giovanni, um, the eighth gym in Pokemon Stadium yesterday. Uh, but we, uh, I just called it at that point. We ended up berating somebody. But uh, I'll, I'll be continuing that this week for sure. So hopefully this works. And it does, okay, here we go. So this is Radish Romp for a pure vanilla, pure vanilla <laughs> level design competition in Super Mario World Central. Just gonna be one level here. 
Oftentimes people don't edit really anything else, they just insert their level as the first level that you will encounter. There we go. So this is their level, Radish Romp. Now vanilla means uh, you're using the assets of the original game. So they're messing around with some of the colors here, but which I, I really like and appreciate. Dragon, I think you redeemed a spin the wheel yesterday. Well, that redeem does count for today, so if you're interested at any time, you can just ask me to spin the wheel and we'll play a different game in the list of over 500 games that I've curated from Atari 2600 to Nintendo 64. Because uh, I didn't get a chance to redeem or to like um, refund you those channel points, those moonstones. You can bank it if you if you feel like uh, just letting me know whenever. Oh, that's nice. Nice to find ourselves a cape. Thank you. That's a pretty rad romp, if I do say so myself. Pretty cool. Simple. Could totally have been in the original Super Mario World. I like the color palette, the purple tint to everything, and the like reddish, the reddish radishes. That's cool. That's it. That was the entry. So, um, what we'll do is we'll spin the wheel and see what we're gonna get. All right. 320. So let's see what game that's going to be. And then I'll update my uh, stream title here. That was a pretty cool level. I would like rate that like a 4 out of 5. Oh. Okay, th 320 is... SpongeBob SquarePants Creature from the Krusty Krab on Game Boy Advance. So related to food, obviously, because we're talking about that Krabby Patty. Talking about that Krabby Patty. Here we go. Just a sec.
to that uh, Mario Paint music. Say first, welcome to the stream. Um, let me do a quick shout out. So, we played some Garfield Caught in the Act on Sega Genesis to start the stream today. Um, that game's related to food because it is a game where your collectibles are burgers and pizzas and lasagna and that sort of, that sort of stuff. Uh, and uh, also, your Starman or invincibility item is a cup of coffee. Um, speaking of coffee, let me go get my coffee that I got up and made. Ah, <clears throat> oh, yes. Nice coffee. Um, I also... I was gonna. You were gonna say cats probably shouldn't have coffee, but they really shouldn't have lasagna. <laughs> That's funny. All I can see there is coffee lasagna, and I keep thinking, is that basically just a tiramisu? Is a tiramisu just a coffee lasagna? So we played Garfield. Caught in the act. Super difficult. Uh, Dracula OD boss fight. <laughs> I don't think I didn't think I was gonna say that sentence on stream today. Uh, you think coffee plus lasagna is IBS? Oh yeah, no. Um, and then after that we played Garfield eats pizza too. That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, after that we played a level called Radish Romp for a, a Super Mario World Central pure vanilla level design competition. It was pretty cool. We did a four out of five. It was, it was really tight. Um, now we're playing SpongeBob SquarePants Creature from the Krusty Krab. I'm gonna switch to my next, um, like my my other alternate layout here. It's uh, for Game Boy Advance games specifically. And you should be able to see me. You should be able to see the game now. Let's go. SpongeBob SquarePants Creature from the Krusty Krab on Game Boy Advance. What's with this, like, epic emotional version of the SpongeBob SquarePants theme? I know guys, let's use pixels on a really tiny screen and try and add dirt and dust like in an old film over top of the title screen. Garfield's least favorite food is raisins. Hold on, just for fun, let's do this. Whoa, man. Ultra trippy. You're getting sleepy. You're getting subscribe -y. Okay, let's just dive. In. 
Okay, I love that pixel art. Look at look at all these like terrified folks here. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Emote anyone right here? That's pretty ridiculous. Okay, what are the options? <laughs> Do we got options? Machines. Oh, interesting. So you have to like unlock arcade machines. What? Okay, we're gonna use the third save slot as always. Here we go. What the hell are we playing right now? Now I can spin the wheel at any time, but remember you can too. And also, Legendary Dragon uh, has uh, a banked spin as well. Diesel dreaming. All I want to do is play full throttle now after seeing that artwork. Ah, Bikini Bottom. It is <clears throat> nighttime and its residents are peacefully asleep in their beds. Am my license in my first car? Or wow, my license in my first car. This is the greatest day ever. I never thought this day would come. Congratulations, SpongeBob. Cool cars mean nothing if you can't drive it. If you're a man, You'll enter the Bikini 5000 and show me what you really got. This is Plankton saying that? Speed is my middle name and racing is my game. And I'm a man. Race to the finish. Race to the finish. Spin in the air to gain health. Interesting. A is jump. B is gas. Left spins left. Okay. Interesting. What are we playing right now? Hell yes. Someone get this this sprite tattooed. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Did they just did somebody create a rat fink SpongeBob racing game? Is that what we're playing right now? Are we playing a rat fink style SpongeBob SquarePants racing game on the Game Boy Advance? What? Just look up Rat Fink. I don't know what is happening. Idea what's going on right here. This is nuts. There's like a particular, there's like a game, a mini game in, in WarioWare that has the same physics in this, like when you're in the air. And there's also like a, a Flash game that has the same sort of tech where you just when you're in the air, you press left and right to angle your vehicle. Oh my god. This music is terrible. What, are, what is this? Is the fact that this exists is crazy. I mean, once we get a game over, I'm spinning. I'm spinning left and I'm spinning right. That's the strap. Oh, no, okay. We're good. No way. Absolutely not continuing that. The tire screeching sound effect reminds you of something from Rayman. Okay, uh, no, don't recommend. Do not recommend. But uh, it exists. I guess. T H X T H Q. I mean, now I'm just like so affixed on the logo that I have to give this a five star rating. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, we're spinning. We're spinning the wheel. So far, we played Garfield trying to be Castlevania, and now we're playing a Rat Fink SpongeBob Flash game on the Game Boy Advance. Spin 
in that wheel. We got 204. Let's see what uh, game number 204 is in the list. Two hundred four is another pure vanilla hack. It's so it's an actual full. Um, I think it's full. A full Super Mario World ROM hack. Um, so we won't just playing like a radish ROM. We won't just be playing the one level. So we're gonna switch it over to this. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do this. And. Let me just update my stream title. So it's called Another Peer. No, not Peer, is it? Another. Yeah, Another Peer Vanilla Hack. Super Mario World 1. So uh, basically, if you don't know what a ROM hack is, it's just like somebody making their own levels, their own overworlds. Some people make Kaizo hacks, which are very intricate, and you need to like perfectly make these like pixel perfect or frame perfect um, movements, like spin jumps and shell kicks and stuff like that. Um, to get through the level, so it's more like about pattern memorization and understanding the physics of how Mario works. Um, and then there's also standard hacks, and this is a standard hack, uh, this is specifically a standard vanilla hack. What that means is that uh, it's using only the assets that the game came with, so the way that we played Radish Romp, it looked like the original Super Mario World. It had some different colors going on, but that's basically it. Uh, no custom enemies, no custom sprites, nothing like mixed in from anything else, any other games. So. Um, I will just update the stream title and we'll go from there. We also have a brand new emote if anyone wants to celebrate. We've got uh, the Nimbus Cloud emote from Dragon Ball Advanced Adventure. Pure vanilla. That cream. That's a 10. That creamery butter. Damn it, coffee is god dang good. That's right, I said god dang it and god dang in the same sentence. Updated. Just gonna take a few more seconds, please be patient. Thanks for all your patience. I think the volume's here. I'm gonna get this right. I think it's ready. I think it's ready. Yep, you should see that, and let's go. Another pure vanilla hack. Bowser's Return. By Blizzard Man. Okay. Now a lot of these Super Mario World hacks, you'll be able to play yourself if you just go to Super Mario World Central. I'll give them a shout out, they have a, a Twitch channel, but it's a, a forum, a really great community as well, of people who come together and build these games. Let's go. Of course, we gotta use the third save slot as always. Welcome back to Dinosaur Land. So it's supposed to be a direct sequel. Uh, Bowser, like many ROM hacks, Bowser has been kidnapped by Peach again, and now you have a new adventure, Mario. Oh, like we as the player, we have a new adventure, Mario, as if it, an, an adventure Mario is a thing. Yoshi's Treehouse. Let's go. Um, if you need more game audio, you just let me know. 
feel like it's a little bit low. I'm not home. I, I has tried to rescue my friends again. Oh, that's sad. Did it say Bowser was kidnapped? Let's see. Let's let's refresh and see. I didn't wasn't really paying attention there. Yeah, Bowser has been kidnapped. It's true. Bowser has been kidnapped Peach again. Oh shit. We gotta save Bowser this time. We gotta return Bowser, that's why it's Bowser's return. Alright. Let's go. Again. So, a few friends have actually asked me, like, if you were just finishing up Super Mario World and you were looking for, like, they were specifically looking for, like, a sequel or, like, a ROM hack that feels like the original uh, or feels like, like, has the same mechanics, like, like nothing crazy, nothing like a Kaizo and nothing really, like, super crazy and new or custom. Um, this is the, exactly the type of ROM hack that I would recommend. change the colors of Mario's, uh, on a few things, actually, on the enemies. Oh, shoot. Well, that's a nice thing to telegraph. Oh, thank you. Say Bowser, he's been kidnapped again. What if Peach kidnapped Bowser for the first time and then Mario has to, like, when we get there, we have to, like, talk to Peach? And say Bowser. Most Kaisers are too hard for you. Yeah, same for me, too. I played a few of them. Uh, for me, I'm all about standard hacks. Like I love the creativity that people have, and some of the some of the little levels that exist out there are really cool. Like I really enjoyed that radish romp one, and it was super simple. Sort of reminds me of the original Super Mario Land on Game Boy. This level. Is that strange? Maybe just its openness. Lava ride. Oh, 
And the reason why this game is about food is just because the title of the game is another pure vanilla hack. So anytime we, if we got flavors in the name, um, games like that are in the list. I just really like that, this idea of doing these retro roulettes because uh, I've got a whole bunch of different themes planned as well. I've got a whole list of uh, spooky and spoopy creppy games, Halloween games, games about, you know, zombies, vampires, Frankenstein monsters, Frankenstein's doctors, Frankenstein's monsters doctors. All sorts of shit. Um, also, uh, a curated list of games that all have to do with colors, or painting, or artistry, or palettes, or... And I just like that idea because I kind of like the, the idea of just discovering new new games I would normally not, not have played. Like, especially Adventure Island on the Game Boy uh, from last time, and Aladdin on Super Nintendo. I had Aladdin on Game Boy. Um, it was a lot more simplified, of course. But growing up, that's the version I had of that game. Um, the, Su the Super Nintendo one is great, and, and we ended up beating it. And uh, the later levels are actually really cool. Something I would have never experienced my myself on the Super Nintendo. with Adventure Island 2 and 3 on NES, but if I knew there was a Game Boy version, I would have totally got it as a kid. Ah, oh, damn. Dang old swoopers. a pretty decently designed level. Munchers, oh no. Oh no is right. Not cool, man. What the? Beep beep. Beep beep to you too. I'm I'm plum gaming here. See what they're trying to do here. Not making it too hard. Just making it a little hard. So far, I'd 100% recommend this to somebody. Um, oh, what? That's it? Not even a full game. I take that back. I take that back. No, the, the few levels that we played were pretty cool. I feel you. This is from 2012, I think is what uh, it said. And uh, that's never going to be finished, obviously, but there's a whole bunch of little demos as well uh, in here, so we don't know if it's going to be a full game or not, but still really cool. Um, I liked where that it was going, idea-wise, and let's uh, let's spin that wheel again. Hope everyone's having some fun. I definitely am. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it's been a good Friday so far. Five eleven. Game 511, what do we got? What do we got? All sorts of games in here. Okay, 
511 is uh, Alfred Chicken on the Game Boy. The original Game Boy. I know that this game came out on Super Nintendo, I think also on NES. It's a platformer. Um, obviously, it's in there because chicken, people eat chicken, and chicken is food, and chicken is also an animal. But it's also food. <gasps> For some people. I'll play the Game Boy version. Cool, cool. Yeah, it came out on NES, uh, Super Nintendo, and Game Boy. Yo, don't rush me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Game Boy, NES, and Super Nintendo. Nice. Just like a, a real nostalgia for the Game Boy sound chip and the Game Boy Color sound chip. So whenever we get a game on one of those, I'm I'm just really stoked. Um, we also discovered a lot of really cool Game Boy games. Um, Kitchen Panic was one that was really fun. Um, Amazing Penguin, I think, is a pretty incredible uh, like arcade style puzzle game on the Game Boy. And uh, yeah, revisited a few as well. Um, you can go back and watch the previous parts of more games about eating and food on my YouTube channel. I've got the full playlist there. And you should be able to see the game. Yep, yep, yep. And hear the game. And let's dive into this. Alfred Chicken from 1993 on the Game Boy. Apologies for the loudness. Yikes. Sheesh. My god, that was loud. My apologies. If you're listening on headphones. Whoops. Okay, so play the Super Nintendo one for like a few minutes before. Yeah, we can do stuff like that. It can do like a downward nose dive. That should be better volume-wise. Headphone height. an explosion? Holy shit, no one told me that. No one told me the chicken was gonna explode instantaneously if it touched any enemy. Excuse me?
you can do that too. What? Okay. Oh, I'm an idiot. Shouldn't have done that. Oh, okay, so that's a checkpoint. Interesting. Cells cooked. You see that? See that, folks? Let's at least beat the first stage. enemy same time just going here how many chaos emeralds does this chicken need to pick up before I can chaos control or is that not this type of game? Are we playing Billy Hatcher the Hedgehog? Are we playing Billy Hatcher and the Giant Eggman? Oh. Was it Hatcher or Hatchet? I think it was Hatcher. I can't remember. What the? Secret? Hell yes. It's for you. Oh no, it's Flowey. It's Flowey from Undertale, folks. Alfred, this will help you. 
Look, don't, don't eat it. Oh no. The jam. It took too much jam, dude. Now all you can see is faces. You shouldn't trust him, Flowey. There's Sam. It's an interesting bonus stage, but now we have bullets. Now we got bullets. That's what those were. Oh, crazy. I'm so into that. Boom. chicken ass that we're spinning that god dang wheel you know not a terrible game I would say that if I got this as a kid on Super Nintendo or something I'd like figure it out and it wouldn't be it just would it just is a little bit of a challenge um, but you just gotta get used to the mechanics I mean we we're a chicken that can shoot stuff <laughs> bet you're what Alfred Chicken Ice. Uh, 133. Okay, let's see what we got here. Let's see what food related game we have here. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sylvester and Tweety Breakfast on the Run. <laughs> for the Game Boy Color. That's what we're playing next, folks. That's crazy. Let me just update this stream title here. Breakfast on the Run. Game Boy Color. I did a couple of streams in the past, um, in a, a couple of months ago, that were um, Game Boy Color license game themed. We played some pretty wacky ones, like uh, a version of Burger Time, that classic arcade Burger Time, but in the style of the Flintstones. It's called Flintstones Burger Time in Bedrock. So who knows what we're going to get with this one. It's the Game Boy Color. Uh, there's tons of Game Boy Color license games. I, did, I do really like the sound chip in... Uh, Game Boy though, and Game Boy Color, so we'll see what this is all about. This is made by Infogrames in 1998. They actually were the company, or one of the companies that made uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon. Should be able to see it. Okay, here we go. Sylvester and Tweety, Breakfast on the Run on Game Boy Color. Another food-related retro game. Released two years before Wario Land 3. And you let me know if uh, the game volume is too much. Look at the effort they put into that, into that pixel font up, up there. <clears throat> That's it. Choose our level, choose the music on and off. That's it. Tweety's close. Not safe for work? Here we go. 
So you've got a fish bar at the bottom. Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. Tweety is the breakfast. simple arcade style thing. The music kind of reminds me a little bit of Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle, which is kind of cool. Granny's House Part 1. Tweety's missing. Find the key to see where he's gone. This is our password. Just like the Aladdin Super Nintendo game. Um, the password is uh, Bulldog, Granny, Tweety, Taz. That Taz looks ridiculous. Um, and Sylvester. I always thought that was funny. If I made my own uh, indie game, I would totally... Okay, whoa. Hold on a second. I was just about to say, if I made my own indie game, I totally would uh, copy that idea and just do the whole uh, character faces as passwords, if I wanted a password system. But holy shit, I did not expect, after playing that auto-running auto or auto-scrolling platforming part, that we would be uh, playing an isometric point-and-click adventure now. What is this, Maniac Mansion now? Come on. This is a little bit weird. Like, it's, it's really cool, I just... It's not what I expected at all. Especially after playing that opening sequence. Like, imagine if, uh... Imagine if the Mega Man X intro, like, tutorial level, um was the beginning of the game, and then right afterwards, it started you off in a Mega Man Battle Network house. And it was like, okay, it's time for school. And you're like, what? Excuse me? That's basically what just happened here. Yes, I'm comparing Sylvester and Tweety Breakfast on the Run with Mega Man X and Mega Man Battle Network. That's what I'm gonna do. Hey, I do what I'm gonna do. Um, Bulldog? Not good. Okay, bulldog means not good. Gotcha. This is like Exodus or Solstice. We also played a game called Altered Space, a 3D alien adventure in, in our uh, regular Sunday viewer request streams. And this is feels a lot like that, like it in mechanics. Nothing here. I'm not here. Damn you. At least, uh, like, or unlike, um, Altered Space, which was made by the same team that made Solstice and Equinox, and composed by Jeff and Tim Fullen, who are amazing composers. Um, unlike those games, this game actually lets the music keep going, so it's more tolerable to play. Those games uh, restart the loop and fade their music loop in uh, every single time you enter a screen, and they actually did the music for uh, Cool Spot as well, the Spot, the video game that we played um, a couple weeks back in this series, which was basically just like a clone of Go. Did we lose that item? Sounds like a low-budget version of the Animaniacs theme song, which is very weird. Okay, so if we do this...
What, you can't stack them? Now it's Resident Evil, folks. We can combine items. Okay, it's Resident Evil, it's Solstice and Equinox. I like it. Oh my god, she's right there! I think she has terrible eyesight. Dribble here for some reason. I'm very confused, folks. Very confused. Cans of cat food. It's weirdly more playable than Garfield caught in the act was once we hit that boss fight. Holy crap. somehow. serious game. Why make this so difficult? Oh, yes. Oh, no. <laughs> the isometric controls I really gotta get used to. Altered Space 3D Alien Adventure was. But I have a feeling we have to collect these dang ass cans. Oh, damn.
fact that we had it and then fell off is the worst, you know? It's just going to be to distract the uh, Bulldogs. Ah, uh, god damn it. We do need it. We do need it. Do -do 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 -do. Please go until I get a game over. Which might be sooner than later. Say never jump a gift bulldog in the library. What? So you want me to like lure this thing over here is what you're saying. Come here, little dummy. Nope. Didn't work. Oh, no. 
No! So close. We have both the bots. Oh no! Hector knocked Sylvester out. He did five percent completed. What kind, of, what kind of torture did they make the for for kids? Like this is ridiculous. This game is like it's not really a puzzle game. It's just a game. There's a lot of games like this on the original Game Boy that are just like these slow, long processes where they just like make a game play like like they take a gameplay, a total gameplay hour to like total if that makes sense. I can't even speak. Um, they to to get you playing the game longer. They make it unnecessarily difficult and like convoluted. It feels very convoluted. Um, I'm definitely gonna spin the wheel though after this. Hell no. Hell no. Spin that wheel. Spin that wheel. Let's see what we're gonna get. Sheesh. 121. If I grew up with that game, I would have not had fun with it. 121. Mm, 121 is Bubble Bobble Madness. Now, I do have a series called The Whim of the Wheel where I, I do the same <clears throat> same format as this, where I spin the wheel and we get random NES puzzle and arcade games, and whatever game we get, I have to try and beat my own personal best high score. Well, most of those games in that series are games that I grew up with as a kid um, on my NES, my original first collection. And uh, one of them is Bubble Bobble. I really love the game. Uh, actually, the only time I've ever made a ROM hack of any game was Bubble Bobble. I made a hundred custom levels in the original NES Bubble Bobble with using an editor um, that was uh, available at the time. Um, somebody just made like a little utility to do that and I thought it was really cool. I had a lot of fun with it. I don't have that ROM hack still to this day, but uh, it was fun to mess around with. Um, I have played the Catwoman game, by the way. We played it on one of our Game Boy Color licensed game streams. Um, Dragon, the Catwoman Game Boy Color game. Cyphers redeeming 4200 Moonstones for our Sunday Retro Request streams. Nice. You're adding Looney Tunes on the Game Boy Color. That one is better, we swear. Okay. Cool, I'll add that. I'll add that to the list. Thank you for uh, adding a game. I had a lot of fun this past Sunday. We played some really fun games. This past Sunday we played uh, New Strange Mario Brothers and we played Maju U. And uh, this Sunday coming up at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, uh, basically every Sunday I, I do, uh, I tackle an ongoing queue decided by you in the chat. We've got Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers on the NES. We have Fire Pro Wrestling on Game Boy Advance, which is one of the original launch titles for the system. Um, when we were playing Super Mario Advance, which is a launch title, I had asked the chat uh, if anyone knew of any uh, good launch titles for the system, and, and this one stood out um, and was redeemed by Moosebones. And then we've got Super Mario Bros. 3 Randomizer, and I'm going to attempt it as just Frog Mario only in one-hit KO mode, which is pretty crazy. Looney Tunes on Game Boy Color Cyphers. And I'll let you know when I'm going to play your game. 
um, in in order. I've got about there's about 15 15 games total, including the three that I had listed um, in the queue. So I'll message you on Twitch and let you know when I'm gonna play it. So yeah, we're gonna play Bubble Bobble Madness, which is a ROM hack, and it's on the original Nintendo. It's a ROM hack of the first NES Bubble Bobble. So stick around for that. The reason why Bubble Bobble and every Bubble Bobble game, um, like retro game, between Atari 2600 to N64 is um, on this list is because Bub and Bob, the main characters, one, it's a classic arcade game, and Bub and Bob, uh, the main characters, once they destroy enemies, um, they all, the enemies turn into everything from ice cream sundaes to vegetables, um, sandwiches, roast beef, fruit, all sorts of different food. Um, just like the, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of classic arcade games that do this. Uh, all the Pac-Man games are in this list for that reason. All the Adventure Island games are in this list for that reason. And we've actually beaten New Adventure Island on the PC Engine, Super Adventure Island on the Super Nintendo, and Adventure Island 2 on the original Game Boy in this series. So Bubble Bubble Madness, oh, I'll just be here in just one second. I'm just going to use the washroom really quick and be right back.
should be able to see the game in just a second here. So when I made my own version of Bubble Bobble, there was a utility that was really easy to use. Um, and uh, you could go in and basically it was like a level editor. And I made 100 levels. Uh, I called it Bubble Bobble Revolution. And uh, later that year, uh, I never released it or anything. Uh, later that year, they actually released a game called Bubble Bobble Revolution on the Nintendo DS. It is in the list here as well. Uh, it's not nearly as good as the original Bubble Bubble. Uh, but this one's called Bubble Bubble Madness, and it was made in 2002. It's roughly around the time I was messing around with that program. Uh, it was in 2004 for me. You should be able to see it. And I'm just going to look that up a little bit. Okay, cool. Here we go. Bubble Bubble Madness. Same story. It is the beginning of a fantastic story. Let us make a journey to the Cave of Monsters. Good luck. Okay, so we have updated sprites as well in the later games. Kind of uh, if we were playing, similar to if we were playing a Super Mario Brothers 1 ROM hack that had the sprites from Super Mario Brothers 3. Yeah, we've got completely unique levels here. That's cool. Can I stand on bubbles? Collecting honeydew melons is great, but what? What do you want from me? What do you want from me? The Grim Reaper game. This is the NES. Uh, oh. Right into the Reaper. It went right into the Reaper. This is a hack for the NES. This is Bubble Bobble Madness. It's a lot harder than the one I made, that's for sure. There's candy up there for us and a crystal. I'm not gonna make it. Ah, it's not even worth it. Candy's only worth 100 points. are worth way more. Damn, we missed it. Wow, that's all we had to do? Oh. 
Why do I suck at this? What's going on? It's maybe a lime. It looks like a honeydew melon to me. That's what I always interpret it as. Let's try this again. in a shoe up there, <laughs> or a turnip in a shoe. Oh, we missed it. Oh, no. Dumb. I'm not gonna get the rupees. That's okay. Oh, okay, let's try this again. See the candy now? Nice. Yeah. Don't hurry me. Yes, got it, got it, got it. Got it in the last second. Okay, whew. Only in the third stage, folks. My, my hack of uh, Bubble Bobble was not this difficult. Leave the pepper. 
Holy crap. No, we have to do this again. That's dumb. save there. What? Oh, they're shooting. They're consistently shooting. Okay, interesting. That's an interesting thing that's happening. entire hack, I never thought about doing something like this. That's cool. Is there a way to cheese, not cheese it, but like... No. This is tough. This is very tough. Actually, even just gonna turn the volume down just a touch. Okay. This is insane. move is here. What's this password? Beeb. Beeb. B 
I I I B. Okay, got it. Gotcha. actually do nothing it starts us from the beginning again so great all them. That sucks. sucks. Well, god damn. I'm going to spin that wheel. It's going to happen. We're going to see what other game we're going to get. That was Bubble Bobble Madness. There is a Bubble Bobble Madness too. If you have that kind of madness in you, then by all means, give it a shot. It's really cool. It's challenging. Holy shit. Game number 204. Pac-Land on the PC Engine. Another Pac-Man game. We played a few Pac-Man games on the stream already so far. Pac-Mania has been pretty cool. Um, Pac-Attack on the Super Nintendo and the Game Gear. We played both versions uh, in this series in more games about eating and food. 
and we've played a few PC Engine games so far, Wonder Boy and New Adventure Island. So Pac-Land on the PC Engine. Let me just uh, update a few things here. Stick around. Storm, welcome to the stream. Just updating the stream title, we're playing Pac-Land on the PC Engine. I can spin the wheel at any time, and you can spin the wheel at any time to uh, have me play a different game with uh, Moonstones, and also uh, Legendary Dragon 75 has one banked spin at the moment as well. Just a reminder. You don't have to use it. This is the third PC Engine game that we're playing on the on the stream in this series. Here we go, folks. Packland, uh, 1989 on the PC Engine. These are the good friends of Pac-Man in the Pac-Land. There you go. Okay, so it's sort of, it's got the sprite of, that's interesting, it's got the sprite of um, like an 8-bit version of it, of Pac-Man 2. Uh, Pac-Man 2 was like a point-and-click adventure on the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. It was really weird. Uh, I don't know why the sequel to an arcade game like Pac-Man became that for some reason, but um, this is interesting. This looks like it is button control. That's what I want. This looks like it is. There we go. A platformer. Whoa. Oh, you just touched that at all? And okay, weird. I gotcha. Oh, what a weird control scheme. Okay, interesting. So basically, um, if I hold A or B, if I hold A or B, A will, I'll constantly move uh, forward to the right. Uh, or to the right, and then uh, if I hold B, it's going to constantly move forward to the the left, like that, B, A, B, and if I want to jump, I just press any directional pad button. Up, right, down, left, that's the controls. It's very weird, but not as bad as Pac-Man 2 was. I like these little Pac-Man ghost cars. They're like little Rolls Royces. Hell yeah. Oh. Well, perfect. You remember this level in Smash Bros? Oh, I like that they're shooting mini ghosts. Aren't you? This is way, way better. Like, infinitely better than Pac-Man 2. Um, on Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Because with that, you, you've got a cursor and a slingshot, and you're interacting with everything, and it's, it's just really weird. It's kind of... That game's more like Hey You Pikachu, to be perfectly honest. It's not like a good point-and-click adventure, it just has point-and-click mechanics. Ooh. 
<laughs> okay, I got lucky there. This is uh, infinitely better. I mean, if you're gonna try to evolve it into a platformer, make it an actual platformer. Yeah, Super Pac-Man 2 needs a mouse, exactly. But you can't even use the Super Nintendo mouse with it. This is cool, this is a lot more arcade style. I'm actually really into this. <laughs> Which trip do we want? We're gonna obviously start with trip one. You know, the PC Engine is definitely capable of better graphics than this as well. It's just very simplified. <clears throat> yeah, the Mario Paint Mouse. So the Mario Paint Mouse um, only works, the Super Nintendo Mouse only works with a few games. Like most weird Nintendo peripherals, they uh, don't end up having that much support in terms of uh, the amount of games they support. Yes. Break time. Let's go. <clears throat> I don't know why Tinkerbell's in this game, but she is. She's the one that gives you the points. your tooth on a UFO. Man, that happens. <gasps> Stay away from me, forest ghosts. I mean, come here. <clears throat> you like fairies. Nice. They're fantastic in Zelda, that's for sure. Very, very useful. Very helpful. Whoa, this is crazy. I'm into it. <sighs> Interesting. Yeah, these... Whoa, nope. There's so many weird perspectives. There's so many weird perspective shifts in that in that part of the level. That's so funny. This is a cool game. So far, one of the one of the cooler Pac-Man games that we played uh, as part of this series. I really liked Pac Attack though. That was a f pretty fantastic uh, puzzle game. I'm a big fan of like Puyo Puyo Pop and um, Super Bust a Move and. Like Puzzle Bobble, Tetris Attack. So it kind of has that, that similar sort of vibe. Close. 
so close. There's no way to, to cheese this, is there? How do you perfectly make that jump? We can get the distance, almost the distance we need, we just need some more height and distance. Hold on a second here. See if I can ride the ghost over to the other side. I think we can. like the closest that we've gotten height wise. I don't even know anymore. Anybody know what you're supposed to do? Because I'm 
tried out a whole whack of options control wise. Destined to uh, spin that wheel. We might. We might be. I think so. I think we're going to spin the wheel. Let's see what game we're going to get. For anyone just joining, I see. A few more people are just joining the stream. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're having an awesome Friday. My name is Matt, otherwise known as 3 Up Moon, and we're doing a retro roulette uh, series called More Games About Eating and Food. I have a list of 500 plus retro games from Atari 2600 to N64 that are all related to food or eating in some way, whether that's in the, in the mechanic or the main character eats characters, um, or uh, if uh, food items are collectibles or weapons, like in Aladdin on Super Nintendo. So let's spin that wheel and see what we're going to get. Game 350. Alright, let's see what this is going to be. It is Tonic Trouble. So uh, the food item in this case being Tonic. Um, tonic Trouble is on the Nintendo 64. All right, let's do this. I believe it's a platformer. I've never played it before. I've definitely seen advertisements for it before as a kid growing up. That's the thing that sticks in, in my head. Um, let's give it a shot. As you can see, if you've been hanging out for the day so far, you can see that uh, the variety of games that we get in, in this series is just pretty awesome. Pretty varied. Let me just switch this over here. should be able to see the game here in just a second. This game is actually made by Ubisoft, so the creators of uh, Rayman, actually, I believe. Let me just fix that. Cool. Um, 
and you should be able to see and hear the game in just a second. Hopefully it's not too loud. It was made in 1999, so you're um, just before Pokemon Stadium 1, which we started a playthrough of yesterday, doing the Gym Leader Castle Challenge. See a few more people are joining the stream. Uh, welcome to the stream, and uh, happy Friday. This is my first time playing this. I've definitely heard of this game. I've definitely seen advertisements for this game growing up. I'm getting Rayman vibes, and I'm getting Crash Bandicoot vibes right away, so let's uh, dive in. Name the game. Well, I thought it was already named Tonic Trouble, but all right. Three up moan. There we go. Now we're currently also playing a full playthrough of Kirby 64 um, on the channel. You can give me a follow if you want to watch that unfold. We're 60% through the game. So it's nice to kind of revisit these games I didn't spend too, too much time with as a kid. There's no issues with the video here. It looks like there might be a little bit. Whoa. This is not what I expected right away. The camera's kind of crazy. I'm using OpenMU. I knew that was like the end of that section too, that's so funny. Oh. That was awful. <laughs> when your character falls down a pit, it kind of sounds like Marge Simpson for some reason. I definitely like Rayman and Crash Bandicoot vibes. What the? Aha! 
טווח ארבע. Speaking of Marge Simpson, we did a Simpsons version of Street, Streets of Rage 2 a couple of days ago, and uh, it's up on my YouTube channel. You can go check it out. We play as Marge and Bart. I called it Bart Knuckle 2. Considering Streets of Rage is uh, called Bare Knuckle in Japan. This is tough. more people are joining. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Friday. Why is this music like the opening to like the Beethoven film from the from the 90s? Or like the opening to like uh, Home Alone? Do you know what I'm saying? It's just like this whimsy, whimsical like the family gets up in the morning and the dog gets into a whole big mess. Beethoven. Time for school. And it's also like, remember Crash Bandicoot's music? We need, we need it to sound like that. We're gonna need it to sound exactly the same as this, but different, but completely original and fresh. But like nothing anyone's ever heard before, but exactly like these 15 examples that we've given you that we don't have the rights to. Usually that's how a lot of composition does go for a lot of people in, in projects. I know a lot of people who do sound engineers. Like, I'm a sound engineer, and you can get, like, all sorts of different projects. Um, and sometimes they ask you to do stuff that sounds, that's actually that ridiculous. Like, they need to sound exactly like ACDC's Thunderstruck, but not Thunderstruck. Badly or anything. But I was expecting someone a bit more, uh, well, less purple. That's pretty racist. Anyway, the, the main thing is to get the can back from Grog before he becomes too powerful. To start off, you've got to free my father at the dock. He's a brilliant adventurer. Once he's free. Wait. Yeah, he's a brilliant adventurer. Once he's free, he'll be able to help you. Yay, now we're doing something. Oh, Jesus. Okay, so the camera lets us rotate like this. It's, the camera's going to always be the trickiest thing in a 3D platformer on the N64. Um, binary bird. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Were you? This game's a classic. I've never played it before. It's my first time playing it. Um, and it's uh, welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a good Friday. I'm not talking into you to you until you free my father. It's like what the hell? Well, it creeped out. Look at that. Look how instantly it locks to your... It has the... The camera lock feature, but look at that. That's a little bit crazy. <laughs> Big booba. Um, okay, look at all these collectibles. Options. 
dynamic. Is that what we want? Well done, Agent Ed. Just found an antidote. Get 160 of these and you'll be immune to the effects of the can. Okay. Remember that some antidotes are inaccessible. You'll have to come back later to find them. Uh, yes, please. Excuse me, tomates. Dog scare. So Ubisoft is the company that made Rayman, right? Is this made by the same team? Welcome to the Doc's Cave, Agent Ed. Remember me, I'm Agent XYZ. Chief Coordinator of the Resistance. If we don't act fast, Grom will take over the entire planet. The Doc can help you. You absolutely must free him. Here's a piece of advice. You can control the camera using the Z button and the yellow C buttons on the controller. Yeah, yes, thanks. Thanks, thanks, newspaper. Uh, what? That's a messed up enemy. One thing to remember, Agent Ed, each time you get 10 thermometers, you get an extra life point in your life gauge. Oh, it's like a little mercury droplet. That's kind of cool. Even Crash's girlfriend had big, no big knockers. Well, so did like every. Oh, hey! That's where he came from, right? Oh. Oh. This is where we came from. Or no. It's not. I'm very confused what happened with the camera there. But we got ourselves a one up. Now I'm getting Wind Waker vibes. <gasps> no! Uh, Candy Kong had the same, same affliction, so to speak. I think we got it, though. Cool, I remember, it remembered. It remembered. That's where he came from. Ow. Hey, hey, watch out. Tonic for Smash Bros. Well, have we got Rayman in Smash Bros yet? Go for it. <gasps> no! Damn it! Wow. I know what to do though. Uh. Yipes. For those that are new to the channel, uh, I stream every single day from 1 p.m. Pacific onward, and every single Friday we do this series more games about eating and food. And of course, tonic is a food, and there's all sorts of like enemy tomatoes in this game, all sorts of food related things. Um, and the idea behind the retro roulette streams is I, I pick a theme, I've curated a, li a list of games um, that all fit within that theme in some way. And I've actually got a couple of lists. Uh, I'm going to be doing a spooky and creepy Halloween sort of themed um, roulette. We'll be starting that as a series as well. And I have another uh, list I'm curating that is all about uh, colors and paint, <clears throat> colors, painting, artistry, like that kind of stuff. Sorry, mm, food, exactly. Also, that's a fantastic album by MF Doom. Rest in peace. If you're into N64 games, I am playing Kirby 64 currently. 
in full on the channel. So we're not too, uh, not, not too close to the end, we're 60% through the game. Do I play Castlevania? Absolutely. Um, as part of this series, I think uh, episode 2 of uh, more games about eating and food, we ended up getting a really cool modification uh, ROM hack of Super Castlevania 4. Which is a really cool game. I grew up with Castlevania 3 in my original NES collection. And Castlevania 1 I played a lot as well. And then of course Symphony of the Night I played a little bit. I also played a bunch of the Game Boy Advance games. Um, but I plan on playing Symphony of the Night again on stream as well. Um, however, the Super Castlevania 4 mod that we were playing was really cool. It was called Coffee Letting, and all the enemies, um, like the hearts, became cups of coffee and, and food and stuff, um, like bread, um, breakfast items. Um, all, all the enemies uh, moved a little faster, but you, we are also buffed um, just a little bit in terms of how much damage we, we could deal. And the cool thing was that there was the ability to run, like they added a run button to the mod as well. Uh, you didn't play as Simon, you played as a totally different character um, from a, a fan game, from a Castlevania fan game. And uh, also, you could, you sp it sped up the amount of time that you could like, like, Oh no, shorten the amount of time between your secondary weapon attacks. So if that makes sense, you could spam it a lot quicker. We recently played uh, the Minish Cap, and I was tapping like crazy. Um, like you, when we were, when we, whenever we got the sword and got the opportunity to use the sword, we could, uh, you could spam it like absolutely crazy. It was, it was nuts. Um, and I wish that somebody did a mod of Link to the Past that made it so that you, you could spam the sword the same way you can in, uh, in Minish Cap. Um, had a blast with it, we ended up beating it. It's a really, really fun game. And I'll be doing the Minish Cap randomizer soon on stream as well. Trying that for the very first time. Uh, yep, Legendary Dragon uh, Symphony of the Night is for PlayStation. It's a good one. And I think it's been remade at some point. I think there might be a remake on the PSP. Psst, Agent XYZ reporting. Slight problem here. The machine's broken. If you fix it, You'll get to taste the dog's popcorn and feel its amazing side effects. Uh, no thank you. No thank you. Feeling this, this music? Uh, feeling this music, but I think we're stuck. over. Hella, hella elevator to hell. Going up. What? Okay, I'm getting some Jazz Jackrabbit vibes in the music. And Rayman as well. It's a lot of really cool music from Ubisoft games that would be perfect for raps. Just saying. What the? Whose face is that? Is that Paul? Is that Newman's own? That is freaking Newman's own, folks. Look at this. Paul Newman. Newman's own in the middle of tonic trouble. Is this as egregious as the Converse ads in uh, iRobot? What do you do with this? Like, so far nothing. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how I feel. Hip. Hip. 
It's a power up. How do we how do we get it? How does a babby form? How does babby form? Oh, is a thermometer in there? Popcorn machine, it's all hooked up. in Wonderland tunnels and look it's a newspaper with some eyes I better stop and look into those eyes while it talks to me and tells me to press the R button okay what what I'm pressing R there we go Super uh hell yes Yes, please. Yes, please. Super Let's do this. Open the bars by standing in front of them and pressing R. Yeah. Nice. Hell yes. Well done, Agent Ed. Your life gauge has increased by one point. tunes. It's very drum heavy. As a drummer, you know, I might be a little biased, but I'm loving it. This is really cool. You made a big mistake fixing that machine. Now the corn people's revolution is underway. <laughs> Inspired by Conquer much? Or Banjo-Kazooie? Uh, down with all popcorn, freedom to all corn. Corn free, as free as the popcorn. What? How do we? Oh, I see. It's like a Deku nut and shield situation. Yep. Music also has a little bit of a Beetlejuice vibe. Anyone remember animated Beetlejuice cartoon? Pretty badass. Aye. Yeah. Oh. Hey, uh. <sighs> Get corn. I'm gonna do it again. 
I love that animated cartoon. Gonna do this again, goddamn. That's where we came from. What's that direction? We need to go here. You know what, the camera's not bad in this. That was dumb of me. The camera is not bad in this game. You never knew in the cartoon or the movie why sandworms like to eat them. I don't know. Was that a thing? That was that was a regular thing in the in the cartoons. Oh shoot! This guy's trying to scam us. Me Robo Suitcase. Me programmed to eject strangers from cave. That's just weird. Watch out, Asian Ed. The Doc's toasters have gone crazy. about food or what. Was a one up, was it worth it? Nah. Whoa. Watch out, dude. Okay. 
Crazy. Doc is great. Doc is all. Doc not leave cave. Alright, dude. backhand and kick the enemies. Nice. What's that now? Oh, now we have a weapon. Hell yes. Might be a little appropriate. Congratulations, Agent Ed. The stick is your first weapon. To hit with the stick, press the B button. Start mechanisms with your stick by standing in front of them and pressing the R button. To open a door with a stick, stand in front of a notch and press the R button. And tip the control stick to the right. Oh. What the hell? Oh my god. Who's this guy? It's Doc Brown. It's Dr. Wally. It's a breakdancing Dr. Wily, everyone. The game's officially lost it. Free! Great nuts and bolts, I'm free. It looks like my toast is in Robo Suitcase. Need a little fine tuning, but I'll see to that later. Let's get out of here. Quickly, we've got a score to settle with Grog. What the hell? So then, young man, you want to get the can back from Grog, I see. Don't worry about my glitchy face. Needless to say that without my help, you're wasting my time. Unfortunately, Grog and his henchmen have raided my workshop and hidden all the parts. If you can find some for me, though, maybe I could build a machine to fire you into Grog's HQ. Start by finding me six springs hidden in the vegetable HQ, and I'll see what I can do. Okay. Loving the loon sound effect. Appeals to the Canadian in me. I'm proud of you, Agent Ed. You've managed to win the doc's respect. Get a set of six objects you bring him, or for each set of uh, six obje objects that you bring him, he'll give you a new power to help you get to the new places. Cool. Oh, there's so many options. Let's go in here. It's a good place to, for a takeoff, Ed, but I don't think you know how to fly yet. Thank you. 
Through this passage, you will find your mentor, the dock, access to the canyon and the pressure cooker. Okay. Mushrooms. Boxing mushrooms. <laughs> Beyond this gate lies the entrance to the dreaded Vegetable HQ, home of the killer vegetables. Welcome to Vegetable HQ, home of the killer vegetables. Can I take your order? HQ, thanks for the Comic Sans game. My contacts inform me that you have just infiltrated the killer vegetables patch. Well done, Agent Ed. We didn't do anything. We've literally fought three veggies. But watch out. The vegetables are dangerous activists. That can has freed them from 200 centuries of stews, soups, and other veggie dishes. Now they've joined forces with Grog to stop the world from ever going back to how it was. And they've hidden the dock's six springs in their patch. You must find them. You don't forget you need 160 antidotes to counter the effects of the can. So that's basically, the antidotes are like stars, I assume, or jiggies. Step foot on the vegetables patch, you little runt. Like bean soup, do you? Come and chew on some of these seeds then. What the hell? Didn't say anything. I'm just going for a stroll here. Supposed to be tofu or something? Thank you. 
Okay, just one second. I'll be right back, folks. Let's continue from here. Just a moment.
All right, folks, just uh, ordering some food, so just took a little break here, but we're going to continue with some uh, tonic trouble. Thanks for sticking around. It's a really fun game. Like, the camera works well. It's not awful. I'm definitely... Uh, you know, the advertisements for this game were a lot more extreme than the game actually is. Extreme! Hope that everyone is having an amazing Friday.
Freezing going on here. Hmm. There we go. Oh, I'm just in there. That's what that's what is happening. Okay. Sorry about the freezing there. Hopefully it doesn't start us over from the beginning with, with the, the health with this uh, creature. sucks. No! No! Banjo! Getting hits in for sure. Oh, 
Oh no! You're so close, that's so dumb. to the rhythm of it, so. I mean, this is a pretty awful boss fight. I have to say, the boss fights in this game have been really awful. The levels have been pretty cool. Nothing wrong with that. But, you know, I don't like the boss fights in Donkey Kong 64 really that much, either. Um, some of the Banjo-Kazooie boss fights are pretty bunk. They're not that fun. again for some reason. Don't know why we're getting freezage. Sorry uh, for this, it's just happening. It's doing its thing. It'll fix itself in a second here. There we go. There we go, folks. This is crazy. Hmm. 
We are doing damage though. Absolutely ridiculous at this point. Am I just wasting time? Make a sandwich of them. Okay, I'm actually going to be right back because. I think my food is here, but I'll, I'll, be, I'll be right back. Um, stick around. Uh, I might just take a quick moment to eat, and then uh, we'll be right back. So. I said that three times. Three times. Holy shit.
All right, so I'm gonna take a, like I said, just a short break just to eat, um, but I'll be back. We've got some Mario Paint music going on and uh, we'll, we'll dive back into Tonic Trouble and maybe spin the wheel. Welcome, Hitorama. Hope you're having a good day. And thanks again uh, for those that are sticking around and just hanging out.
Thank you so much for your patience, folks. I'm finally back. Just had some food, had some coffee, all refueled up. Hopefully you enjoyed some of the Mario Paint music. It's one of my favorite Super Nintendo soundtracks. Um, and hopefully we don't have to reset the controller here. We can just hop right in. Yep, perfect. Here we go. This is Tonic Trouble. For anyone that's just joining, every single Friday I do um, a series, a retro roulette series called More Games About Eating and Food. I play tons of games that are related to food and eating in some way. And uh, this is Tonic Trouble on the N64. And somehow we won. Maybe perhaps unintentionally. But it's a platformer made by Ubisoft from 1999. I believe it's very inspired by Rayman. It looks like it's made by the same team. And anyone can spin the wheel at any time, including myself. Um, you can uh, basically have me play a different game. And I have a curated list of, of retro games from Atari 2600 to N64 that are all related to food. This is episode uh, 10, I think, I believe. So you can go watch all the previous episodes up on YouTube. And thanks for hanging out. Thanks for choosing to chill here. This is where we need to go. Watch out, the vegetables have spotted you. Your cover's blown now. Grog himself is watching you. If you don't make it, the resistance will deny ever having heard of you. What the hell? If you need more game audio too, just let me know at any time. I can adjust that. Just give a little more here.
Just gonna move this around. Interesting. There's our second spring. One, two, three seconds. Welcome, uh, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. Nothing new. <clears throat> Nothing specifically new, no. <clears throat> okay. 
Maybe that thing can't die. Super Ed! Unfailable. <clears throat> yeah, we don't have the flying ability yet, so... The new MF Grimm album, you recommend. Cool. Daryl, you're looking at Tonic Trouble from 1999 on the N64 by Ubisoft. It's the same team and develop. Developer as uh, Rayman. It's just freezing for a second here. Not sure why. Yeah, it's a platformer. We're trying to find six springs in each level. Is that our first game over? That's dumb. That's our first game over. <clears throat> I'm not muted. You can hear me. I'm not muted at all. It reminds you of Gex. Nice. You're dying far too often, little cutie pie. Crazy Panda, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. We're playing Tonic Trouble. This is part of the more games about eating and food retro roulette series that I do every Friday. Anyone has the ability to spin the wheel and make us play the next game. Um, but basically, we spin the wheel on whatever game we get that is a retro game from Atari 2600 to N64 that's related to food in some way, whether the enemies are food or the collectibles are food or there's a food item in the tunnel. And I've never played this game before. This is my first time playing. Isn't the frog supposed to become a prince? Not always. The internet on the island sucks today. It's going okay for me. Recently you were playing Crash Bandicoot. I mean, this is very Crash Bandicoot-esque. Um, how am I liking this so far? It's, I mean, it's alright. It's nothing, <clears throat> it's nothing crazy. I saw the advertisements for this growing up as a kid. It's not terrible. The camera works out pretty good. You 
can do the side hops like in and backwards hops like in uh, Ocarina of Time as well <laughs> which is funny Whoa. You know, the tired playing Rayman 3 kind of feels like Rayman 3. Just cooling down now. You had an active day outside. It's very hot today. Nice. Oh, now we did all this already. We determined. Earlier today we were playing Pack Land on the PC Engine. Uh, we played some Super Mario World vanilla ROM hack levels that people made. Uh, a demo that someone put together called it another pure vanilla hack called Radish Romp. That was pretty cool. Is that just something there? Weird, then like, that's kind of the only way we can go. <clears throat> that was a dumb death. Cappuccino blast drink, nice. Um, that one I've listened to, yeah, for sure. It's, it's pretty cool. Didn't 100% stick with me, but it was, it was cool. We can't fly it, so... That's why I was saying, I think we can actually do this area here. So we must just be, like, in the wrong area altogether. I see what's going on here. I'm gonna use the stick. Cause we can we got the stick as a bit. We can do that. It's not about flying. I mean it is about flying, it's just about flying in a different way. Uh... Turtle favorite, hell yeah. these things. Oh no! You're a chocolate man through and through with this turtle little chocolate. Spring got. <laughs> a Chaco game? Well, if you want to spin the wheel, feel free to spin that wheel. The way is a totally different game. Who knows what we'll get? There are lots of chocolate related games in the, in the queue. <clears throat> we could get it. That stuff. Why do I just get vibes of uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon when I hear this sound effect? Oh, 
Spin the wheel this minute. It's happening. We're spinning that wheel, folks. This was Tonic Trouble on the N64. It's I would recommend it. If you're into uh, platformers, it's uh, more puzzle-based than anything. It's not really about combat. It's more about puzzle solving. Um, definitely would recommend it. I'm just going to spin that wheel here and see what game we're going to get. Sorry, I was just getting a message from my partner. Um, and we're spinning that wheel, and we've got uh, game number 333, so let's see. And this does kind of remind me a little bit of, like, Conker's Bad Fur Day. Like, it's, it's, it's like one of those. One of those uh, N64 platformers. 333, let's see here. Come on. Just gonna take it. Okay, three this key and see her. <clears throat> Curb Dreamland 2 on uh, this series Friday um we did it like three or four weeks ago. We ended up beating the whole thing on Game Boy. Uh, then we ended up playing Kirby 64 for a little bit, and it inspired me to do a full vanilla playthrough of Kirby 64 right now, and we're, we're doing that on the stream throughout the week. You can catch me doing that, and uh, I think we're two parts in. We're about 60% to the game. Um, and Kirby and the Amazing Mirror is one of the Game Boy Advance games. I haven't uh, spent too much time with it. So let's uh, let's dive in. I can't guarantee that there's anything chocolate related in the game, but uh, let me just update my stream title, all that stuff. And thanks again to everyone that's been hanging out. Oh yeah, Stegosaurus McCartney is good people for sure. Kirby in the Amazing Mirror. 
Uh, we've been spending a lot of time playing Game Boy Advance games on the stream. Um, I'm really stoked to dive into this one, actually. Uh, and I've also been really uh, enjoying Game Boy Advance games. Uh, I've just been more nostalgic for... For those games, I spent a lot of time with my Game Boy Advance. And uh, my games got a lot more wear uh, in my DS as well when I got my Grey Brick DS, the very first one. I spent a lot of time still playing uh, and the uh, Game Boy Advance games. This is Kirby and the Amazing Mirror on the Game Boy Advance. Hello, you should see me, and you should see the game in just a second here. Just a moment. I mean, you could almost call this one Kirby and the Four Swords because it does kind of feel like the Four Swords games. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's give it a, a shot. Let me know if you need less game audio or more game audio. This is from 2004. Cool. <clears throat> uh, well, we already uh, you already redeemed Super Mario RPG, so that means in in probably I think it's like two or three weeks. We'll be starting our playthrough of Super Mario RPG as part of our viewer request Sundays. And then I'm going to be, uh, that'll be the beginning of an ongoing series where I play Super Mario RPG, uh, Paper Mario, Paper Mario 2, and Mario and Luigi Superstar Sega. <laughs> How can I turn back the earth to make that happen? I'll drink the ocean. Don't drink the ocean. Of course we have to do that third save slot. Let's go. There's sub games, collected items, cool. Super simple. Interesting, so we have Kirby's that follow us. Come on. Follow us. Okay, cool. Let me know if you need. Uh... Yeah, I'm actually gonna bring the volume down just a touch, just because I don't want it to be too too loud. I'm having a lot of issues with the monitoring at the moment. Okay, so we go through these mirrors to go through each section. <clears throat> Sounds good. Ah, okay. Yeah, stand there. Thank you. I'm like waiting for Christmas over here. <clears throat> It'll happen. Thank you. 
Okay. Is there something that happened? I got almost like an extra bounce off of them. Interesting, interesting. You're the green one for sure. Definitely. Whoa. Cupid Kirby, our first power. There we go. Might be a bit better. Interesting. Oh, and we can literally just fly. And now Yellow Kirby has wind ability. That's cool. If they can get abilities on their own, that's also pretty badass. Um, I guess, yeah, this is where we're going. Yeah, this is actually like the first level, I think. Interesting. Nice. Thanks, Kerbs. This is cool. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of Kirby 64, the game we're playing right now, just because you can combine the abilities together. You, know, you can't do that in any other Kirby game, but this is still really, really cool. I like the idea that um, the Kirbys that are following us are, look, look, they have different abilities up at the top. Gooey. You can call for help by pressing that, and then they show up. So that's pretty cool. It's basically like uh, the, the Kirby game where you, you've got your buddies that, you can, that can show up, but they're like Kirby's. They're not animal buddies, they're actual Kirby's themselves. Can I switch colors? No, I don't think so. I do not think so. Um, Sword of Kirby basically just turns into Link. The same Link Kirby that uh, you can play as in Super Smash Bros. Also, you get this badass multi slash. And you can do this. And that. Yes. 
Look at this spoopy background. Some really good uh, pixel art going on there. What? Shadow Kirby. Nice. Didn't expect Shadow Kirby. Sugar Rush. Ooh, Moonlight Mansion. Let's kill this golem real quick. That was pretty badass and satisfying. Can you uh, control somehow which powers they are? Uh, nope. You can't either. Kirby is Link, yeah. No, I, th I think I think that if they run into enemies and they eat them, you know what I mean? Like, look, that they just lost their power up, and the other one took it. So, you know what I mean? Like, they're they just exist in the same universe as you, and they get power ups the same way you do. And uh, this game was meant to be like multiplayer, so you actually could play multiplayer if you had linked all the you know Game Boy advances together. like my partner's home. Which is awesome. I might take a quick, quick, uh, just a, a two second break here. I have only one signal left for my buddies again. Okay, cool. You can unlock uh, batteries and stuff like that too. Oh, oh. I think we can easily kill this guy. Yeah. Hey, welcome on. Flosty. Mr. Flosty? Mr. Flosty? It's gotta be a translation thing. Oh, buddy. There we go. And I think... Yep, yeah, we got Ice Kirby. He's got Ice Breath. That's cool. Very, very badass. Badass. Get it. There we go. Boom. What does this do? Opens up something in the overworld. Nice. Okay. Welcome on. Oh, these are different uh, power ups. I think. Yeah. Bomb Kirby. Which is basically just Blue Tunic Link. The bombs. That's cool. And then. This gives you Fighter Kirby, who can do Hadoukens. This is basically like Ryu Kirby, folks. Street Fighter Kirby. I mean, I think I'm going to go with the Fighter. Oh, interesting. It's all sorts of... Okay. Just all sorts of different paths for levels you can take. It's not as linear as the other Kirby games. That's amazing. Just go for it. Run for it. 
Sugar Rush time. Let's go. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. Thank you for the recent follow as well. Okay, we need a fighter again. We got Cutter Kirby, which is kind of cool. I'm gonna go with uh, Fighter again. It was just a really good, uh, really good power. Oh, Wispy Woods, but he's a castle. the shard of uh, the amazing mirror. There you go. Paths. I love 
this funk remix of this. Oh no! Apparently the music was getting awesome. So if I haven't called on our friends for a while. What the hell? Might as well. Where'd they go? Come on. So we actually, there's two different occasions for, for fire powers. You've got standard and you've got burning. I still kind of miss, like, in Kirby's, uh, Kirby 64, how you can combine power ups. I think that's one of my favorite things about that game. But this game looks great and plays great. That was a 
three at the moment. We could have got three one up there. That was insane. Okay, well I guess we missed out on that. Steal our abilities. That's interesting. Very interesting. Mustard Mountain. Oh, uh, okay, so we need them here. Thank you. 
Fox, thank you for your patience. My partner just got home, so I just wanted to spend some time with her for a little bit before I got back into the game. Should be able to see me now. Hello. Uh, for anyone just joining, we are playing Kirby and the Amazing Mirror from 2004 on the Game Boy Advance. This is part of our ongoing Friday series, More Games About Eating and Food. Uh, I spin a roulette wheel, or you can spin the wheel, and Daryl spun the wheel and got this. Um, and it's, uh, I think, meant to be like a multiplayer experience where you can link up to other Game Boy Advances and other people can play as the other colored Kirbys. But you can play one player like this with CPU buddies, basically. Uh, have I played Pokemon Unite? I have not. It's free on the Switch. It's not my type of game, though. Not really my style. In fact, it just came out and everyone's been playing Pokemon Unite and I've been playing Pokemon Stadium from 2000. Welcome to the stream, Mom, if you're still hanging out. that have been patient and kind of hanging out like throughout the break. I appreciate that. If you're watching on YouTube, click that subscribe button. This will be part 10, I believe, of the more games about eating and food. Speaking of food, look at this. Look at this. He's trying to eat us. Kirby's original final smash came from. We got some flan, a hamburger, and onigiri. <clears throat> it originated from this game and also Nightmare in Dreamland. The Cook Kirby ability. Let me just make sure the audio is okay balance here. I think it is. Uh-oh. Cute. Look at him. One more. We got this.
Okay, we're having some emulator issues. Just, just one second here. Look at this. Mini Kirby. That's cool. down. Not good. Playing Kirby or, or Zelda.
That's just some terrible enemies. versus blades. Hello, Kirby. Nice. <clears throat> cool. power up for more than two seconds. This is crazy.
Okay. Oh. Donkey Kong barrels, anyone? Super spicy curry that we just ate. not paying attention. <clears throat> That's okay though. I was not paying attention. <clears throat> okay, this just opened up for us. this level, but you can't exit the level as easily as you can in Kirby 64, or in the Game Boy games, but that's fine. Oh. 
he shakes his walrus butt at us as well, too. So come on. Get out of here. Tracking completely. We didn't take this route. Pretty great pixel art in here as well. <clears throat> the backdrop is awesome. Thank you. 
a whole bunch of really cool different power-ups in this. Like the Cupid Kirby and the, and the Missile Kirby. If only we can hold on to it. And then of course you've got the classics like Beam. And then we classically get Beamed. Exactly the power up that helps in that situation, but that's fine. Hmm, that loops us back around to where we've been before. Thank you. 
I know, I'll call my friends. Let's go. So this whole, uh, all the levels are kind of connected in one big, like, open world map, is that the idea? That's what it's trying to give the illusion of, at least. Hmm. Hmm. What the hell's this? It's just pretending to be a mirror? This is Metroid fusion looking area that we got going on here. Look at this. Do you find any alien eggs around? Don't go standing too close to We got the laser ability, which is pretty sweet.
interesting. I mean, it loops this around like that. Parasol Kirby. Okay, that unlocks that, but we still don't have another shard. I think what I'm going to do is call the stream for now, but uh, every single Friday I do this, I do more games about eating and food. You have control of the, of the wheel, I have control of the wheel, and I've curated a list of themed games, themed retro games that are all themed around food, eating, or cooking in some way. Of course, all the Kirby games are on that list, and we played Kirby's Dream Land 2. We've now tested this one out, which is pretty cool. I imagine this one um, would be a lot more fun if you could link up Game Boy Advance. Uh, like with a, with a link cable, like if you had some some way to connect it in, in some fashion there, that'd be really cool. Um, but I'm going to take a look and see who's online. We played some really cool games today. Uh, I want to say thank you to everyone that's been hanging out. Um, everyone that uh, stuck around through the waits. And uh, thank you to Mortis for the recent follow. Thank you to Cyphers for redeeming a brand new game for our viewer request Sunday. Every single Sunday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific, I tackle an ongoing queue of retro games that are decided by you in the chat. I play the games in the order that they're redeemed. I'll let you know and message you on Twitch uh, when I'm going to play your game. And if you want to check out the previous ones, you can go to the, those playlists on YouTube. Every one of my streams is on YouTube. And if you're watching on YouTube right now, click that subscribe button. Let's see who is on live right now and what people are streaming. Yeah, we're going to raid uh, our good friend, the Central Scrutinizer. Um, thanks again, everyone, for hanging out. It was really fun. I might do 